once you get to the UCAT, you won't even remember what it was like. Like you won't even remember the pain that you went through of revising the UCAT. When you get into medical school and eventually become a doctor, I promise you it will be the best decision you've ever made in your life. Don't worry about what the rest of the people and the whole entire world are doing because they don't have the same goal as you. I remember exactly you know, what it was like to revise the UCAT, to, to do really bad for a couple of weeks, to really struggle while all of your friends are enjoying summer. It's really important to remember that if a lion was judged on its ability to climb a tree like a monkey, it will spend the rest of its life thinking that it's stupid. What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. I hope it's not the first time watching one of my videos, but in case it is, I'm a fourth year medical student studying King's College London. And I actually realized I haven't told you guys much about my experience with UCAT. In this video, I want to take a second to uh, reflect over the UCAT and talk to you guys about my whole entire experience of sitting the dreaded exam that is the UCAT. What I haven't told you guys is that whilst I've actually sat the UCAT only once, I actually uh, trained for it and prepared for it twice. During my A-levels, I applied for the UCAT, but unfortunately after receiving my AS level results, I didn't get the grades needed for my uh, medicine application, so I actually canceled my UCAT exam after four weeks of preparing for it. And to be honest with you, I was quite happy that I canceled the exam because by no means was I ready to sit that exam. So I want to spend this video to look back on my experience uh, retrospectively and tell you guys what I learned about um, the whole process of sitting and preparing for the UCAT. So the first thing I want to tell you guys is that I really, really uh, wish that I believed and understood that, you know, you don't necessarily need to get above 700 to get into a good medical school. At the time, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, um, you know, everyone says that in order to get an offer, in order to get invited to an interview, you need to get at least 700. And whilst, of course, the higher the score, the more likely you are to get into medical school, it's not that black and white. You know, if you don't get above 700, there definitely is still a chance for you to get into medical school. I personally got a 645 in the UCAT, and I remember when I received my results and opened up the letter, I was so disheartened at my score. I honestly think there was no point applying, uh, but I actually went to speak to one of my lecturers in university and I told her about my score and she said, like, Kenji, don't worry. That is still like a, a decent score. It's an okay score. Make your application anyways. And you know, let's see how it goes. And honestly, if it wasn't for my lecturer who, you know, giving me the motivation and inspiration to apply anyways, I wouldn't be here right now. So I wanna start by telling you guys, if you don't get above 700 on the UCAT, don't be disheartened, don't give up. You may have other areas on your application, on your personal statements, and different areas of your application that are stronger and can compensate for that UK CAT score. For example, in my case, my personal statement was very, very strong. My academics in university was strong as well. So having a score that is you know, not above 700 doesn't immediately mean that you can't apply for medical school. So that's the first you know, thing I wanna tell you guys. So the first thing I wanna tell you guys is, don't give up if you don't get above 700, make the application anyways. The reason I say this is the application process itself will teach you so, so much. It's not just about you know, getting a high UK CAT score. The application itself is a whole learning experience and will give you the experience necessary to make your application uh, more likely to be successful the following year. For example, one of my friends uh, got an OK UK CAT score and um, they made their application to med school, but unfortunately they forgot to attach their reference to the application. So even though they got a decent UK CAT score, they weren't used to the application process. They forgot to attach their reference and contact um, you know, their referee to write them a reference and they had to completely withdraw their application and apply the following year. So the actual application process itself is quite tricky. And even if you don't have a UK, good UCAT score, it's still really good to go through the application process anyways and get a feel of what it's like to apply for medical school. So that the following year, if you do reapply, if you don't happen to get in, you'll have a higher chance of getting in. And even with a score like 645 or less than 700, there still is a chance of you guys getting in. So don't give up hope. The next thing I wanna say is that if you're training for the UK CAT now and not getting a good score, don't be disheartened. I thought the UCAT was an aptitude test and there was no way of improving at all, but that is entirely not true. How you need to view the UCAT is training to become a doctor. Medical schools want um, medical students who are able to think analytically, and that's the sort of skill you need to develop. And the key word there is develop. Of course, if you're born with a natural uh, mind to think analytically, of course you'll be at an advantage now. But that doesn't mean that if you're born with a mind that's not necessarily an analytical, that you won't be able to catch up and even pass the people who are naturally gifted at thinking analytically. What you need to do is spend a good amount of time practicing these questions and developing your mind so that slowly over time you become an analytical thinker. And that's exactly what I'm doing in medical school. I personally wasn't born with the ability to think analytically. I trained with the UCAT, I gave it time. I slowly developed my mind into an analytical thinker. And even as med school is going along, you know, the further I go into med school, the closer I become to becoming a doctor, my mind is slowly becoming the analytical uh, thinking that's needed to become a doctor. If you're not born with a mind of an analytical thinker, don't worry, hard work will always be to lazy talent. If you are naturally gifted at you know, analytical thinking, of course, like fair play and you're very lucky, but if you're not, don't worry about it, you know, 
give the time to you cats to slowly develop your mind and what you'll see is that after a couple of weeks of you know training your mind to think analytically you definitely will meet the mark that is required to do well on the UCAT. It's really important to remember that if a lion was judged on its ability to climb a tree like a monkey it will spend the rest of its life thinking that it's stupid and if you're the sort of person that was born a monkey and is able to climb a tree straight away then you're very very lucky but if you're a lion you know your strengths are in different areas and you can't necessarily climb a tree uh, okay, maybe lion is a bad example because lions will never be able to climb a tree. Let's take a jaguar. Let's say you have skills in other areas. You're a jaguar, but climbing a tree is your natural gift. But over time, if you put the effort in, you put the work in, you, you'll slowly be able to develop the mind, the analytical thinking that is needed to perform well on the UCAT exam. So if you're not doing well on the UCAT right now, you're not an analytical thinker, don't be disheartened. Don't think you're stupid because you know, you're know you not naturally born with the ability to climb a tree. Keep working at it and over the next couple of weeks, you'll definitely see an improvement. The next thing that I really wish I understood about the UCAT is that what the UCAT is truly testing, apart from analytical thinking and maybe more so than, than analytical thinking, is resilience. The ability to constantly get bad results over and over and over again over time and still continue to, uh, to push and learn. And then finally, after many weeks of practicing to get a good score. That's what resilience is, and that's exactly what the UCAT is truly testing. Medical schools need a way to cut off the loose ends. There's only two methods of really doing well in the UCAT. The first method of doing well in the UCAT is being naturally born with the skills that are required for the UCAT, which is extremely rare, is being someone who's able to endure failure constantly and keep going. Of the 27,000 people that sit the UCAT every single year, don't be in the proportion that lose hope and decide to crash the plane before it's even landed. Keep going and don't be one of those people that medical schools are able to cut off just because they lose hope and lose faith in doing well in the UCAT. You need to think that the process that you're going through right now, the really challenging time that you're spending doing the UCAT, is not only testing your resilience now, but it's actually building up your resilience uh, for one day when you're a doctor. Resilience in medical school and as a doctor is one of the most important skills and characteristics to have. Medical school isn't easy, being a doctor isn't easy, so think about what you're doing and what you're going through right now uh, through the UCAT as training yourself and building up the resilience that's needed to be a good doctor. And that's exactly what you're doing right now. To be honest with you, you will only see improvements on the UCAT after weeks and weeks of failing. It took me around three or four weeks until I actually began to see a slight difference in improvement in my score. So don't expect to do well immediately. Don't expect to do well after the first week, the second week, the third week of practice. Expect to start seeing results and changes you know, as your mind and your neurons and your brain slowly adapts to analytical thinking that is needed for the UCAT and eventually you will see your score rise and rise and rise slowly until you reach a score that is your real potential and you can finally go and sit that exam. The last point that I really want to tell you guys is that a low UCAT score or UCAT score that's not above 700 does not mean in any way, form, like shape that you're going to be a bad doctor. Having a good UCAT score has nothing to do with the type of doctor you're going to be. Of course it's important and of course it's a part of the application process but it's not going to determine how you are to your patients and how the patients see you. The UCAT only came in a couple of years ago and the consultants that are treating us now in the hospitals did not set the UCAT at all. And to be honest with you, the majority probably wouldn't do too well in the UCAT itself. And I know I can personally say that if I sat the UCAT today, I probably wouldn't get the score that I got before. I personally know friends who did really bad in the UCAT got in through medical school a different way, and right now are amazing doctors and amazing medical students. The UCAT only tests one type of intelligence, which I believe is analytical thinking. And as I said, if you judge a lion on its ability to climb a tree, it will spend the rest of its life thinking it's stupid. There are so many different types of intelligences that are really important to becoming a doctor, if not more important. For example, social intelligence and the ability to speak to people. Emotional intelligence, the ability to understand your own emotions, control your emotions and control the emotions of other people. These are only two examples, but there's so many different types of intelligences that are more necessary and more important than the UCAT in becoming a good doctor. So if you're not getting a good score now, and if you just scrape a good UCAT score, don't be disheartened. Don't let it make you think that you're not good enough for medical school and not good enough to become a good doctor. And lastly, if you do end up sitting the exam and you get, um, you know, not a good score, don't give up. There are different ways into medical schools without the UCAT. Look at alternative options. Look at the GAMSAT. Look at the BMAT. You really need to look at universities that don't put a lot of pressure on the UCAT. For example, I know that Kings don't really look too much at the UCAT, which is why they accepted my score of 645. So if you don't do well on the UCAT, do not be disheartened. Look at your alternative options and focus on the universities that will focus on the other aspects of your application where you're strong at. If you want help with deciding which university to go to, make sure to follow me on Instagram and the rest of my social media. Get in contact with me and I'd love to help you. And I want to finish this video off by saying that I remember exactly where you are now. I remember exactly, you know, what it was like to revise the UCAT, to, to do really bad for a couple of weeks, to really struggle while all of your friends that want to do law and want to do uh, art and maths are enjoying summer. 
I know exactly what it's like to be bored as hell throughout the whole summer, sitting there every single day working hard on your desk, working in the library, especially during coronavirus right now. I know exactly what you're going through and I want to finish this video off by saying that I promise you, put the work in, you know, sit down, like don't worry about your, what your friends are doing, turn off Instagram, turn off social media, don't worry about what the rest of the people and, and the whole entire world are doing because they don't have the same goal as you. You made a choice to apply for medical school and that's a standard that you set for yourself and you have to live by. So don't worry about what they're doing. Sit down, revise, put the effort in that's needed. And I, I really, really do promise you from the bottom of my heart that once you get through the UCAT, you won't even remember what it was like. Like you won't even remember the pain that you went through of revising the UCAT. When you get into medical school and eventually become a doctor, I promise you it'll be the best decision you've ever made in your life. And you will look back on the time that you were stressing for the UCAT like I do right now and thank yourself so much that you had the discipline and you put in all the effort that was needed to become a doctor and get into medical school. And I promise you that if you put the work in now and you work very hard now you will have your time to chill you will have your time to play and enjoy summer once you get into medical school and get exactly where you want to be in your life you know the couple of weeks you're spending now uh, right now is a small tiny percentage of your, of your life and really will have no significance in terms of the amount of time that you're spending for the rest of your life and for the rest of your career so put in that amount of time that is needed work hard work well and I promise you one day you will get into medical school and you will thank your future self so much for putting in the hard work that you have done. So I really hope this video has been informative and maybe motivational for you guys. If you found it so please do me a favor and make sure you subscribe, turn on your post notifications, give the video a thumbs up and lastly share it with any of your friends who you think that might benefit from this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one and good luck with your applications.